Foghorn, awful Kathleen. Tis indeed, ma'am. It's not the fog I mind. I really love fog. They say it's good for the complexion. <laughs> it hides you from the world and the world from you. I was scared out your wits coming back from town. You couldn't see your hand in front of you. It's as if everything has changed. Nothing is the same. No one can find or touch you anymore. Oh, I wouldn't mind if Smythe was a fine, handsome man, like some chauffeurs I see. If it was all in fun, like, for I am a decent girl. Mm. But for a sniveled runt like Smythe, I told him, you must think I'm hard up to notice a monkey like you. I warned him, one day I'll give him a clout that'll knock him into next week, and so I will. <laughs> calling you, warning you, reminding you. But it can't tonight. It doesn't remind me of anything. Except, perhaps, Mr. Tyrone snores. I've always loved teasing him about it. He has snored ever since I can remember. Especially after he's had too much to drink. <laughs> But he's like a child, he hates to admit it. Well, I suppose I snore too sometimes, and I don't like to admit it. So I have no right to make fun of him, have I, Kathleen? Ah, sure, everybody healthy snores. It's a sign of sanity, I say. <laughs> what time is it, ma'am? I ought to be back in the kitchen. Oh, no, don't go, Kathleen. I don't want to be alone yet. Well, we won't be alone long. The master and the boys will be home soon. I doubt they'll be home for dinner. <laughs> they have such a good excuse to stay in the bar rooms where they feel at home. Have another drink yourself, Kathleen, if you wish. Oh, I don't know, ma'am. I can feel what I've had already. <laughs> hey, one more, one too many ham. <laughs> you good health, ma'am. I really did have good health once, Kathleen. <laughs> but that was long ago. The master's sure to notice what's gone from the bottle. He has the eye of the hawk for that. We'll play Jamie's trick on it. You just measure out a few drinks of water and pour it in. Ah, the old water! You know where to taste! No, by the time he gets home, he'll be too drunk to tell the difference. He has such a good excuse, he believes, to drown his sorrows. Well, it's a good man's failing. Don't be silly, Kathleen. My husband is a very peculiar man. Well, he's a fine, handsome gentleman. Never mind his weakness. Oh, I don't mind. I've loved him dearly for 36 years. That's right, ma'am. And love him dearly you should, because any fool can see he worships the ground you walk on. Speaking of acting, ma'am, how is it you were never on the stage? I? What put that absurd notion in your head? I was brought up in a respectable family and educated in the best convent in the Midwest. Before I met Mr. Tyrone, I never even knew what a theater was. I was a very pious girl. 
I even dreamed of becoming a nun. I never had the slightest desire to be an actress. Ah, sure. I can't see you a holy nun, ma'am. You never darken the door of a church, God save you. <laughs> I never felt at home in the theater, even though Mr. Tyrone has made me go on all his tours with him. I have little to do with the people in his company or anyone on the stage. Not that I had anything against them. They were always very kind to me and I to them. But I never felt at home with them. Their life was not my life. Oh, let's not talk of old things that couldn't be helped. My, how thick the fog is. I can't even see the road. All the people in the world could pass by. I would never know. I wish it was always like that. It's getting dark already. Soon it'll be night, thank goodness. It was kind of you, Kathleen, to keep me company this afternoon. I would have been lonely driving uptown all by myself. Ah, sure. Wouldn't I rather ride in a fine automobile and stay here? It was like a vacation, ma'am. <laughs> there was only one thing I didn't like. What was that, Kathleen? The way the man in the drugstore acted when I took in the prescription for you. The impudence of him. What are you talking about? What drugstore? What prescription? Oh, of course. I'd forgotten. The medicine for the rheumatism in my hands. What did the man say, Kathleen? Not that it matters, as long as he filled the prescription. Well, it mattered to me then. I'm used to not being treated like a thief. He gave me a long, hard look and says insultingly, how did you get hold of this? I says to him, it's none of your damn business. But if you must know, it's for the lady I work for, Mrs. Tyrone, who's sitting out in the automobile. That shut him up quick. He gave a quick look out to you and went to get the medicine. Yes, he knows me. I have to take it, because there is no other that stops the pain. All the pain, I mean. In my hands. Poor hands. <laughs> You'd never know they were once one of my strong points, along with my hair and my eyes. And I had a fine figure, too, Kathleen. They were musicians' hands. I used to love to play the piano. Mother Elizabeth and my music teacher said that I had more talent than any other student they remembered. <laughs> my father paid for special lessons. He spoiled me. He would have paid for me to go to Europe to study after I graduated from the convent. I might have gone if I hadn't fallen in love with Mr. Tyrone. Or I might have become a nun. I had two dreams. To become a nun was the more beautiful one. To become a concert pianist was the other. Oh, I haven't played the piano in years. I couldn't now even if I wanted to. Such crippled fingers. I tried to get back into my music after I was married, but it was impossible. One night stands, cheap hotels, dirty trains. Leaving children, never having a home. See how ugly they are, Kathleen? So crippled and maimed. It's as if they'd been through a horrible accident. So they have come to think of it. I won't look at them. They're worse than the foghorn for reminding me. But even they can't touch me now. I see them, but they're far away. You've taken some of the medicine. It made you act funny, ma'am. If I didn't know better, I'd think you'd have drop taken. <laughs> it kills the pain. You go back until it last. You're beyond its reach. Only the past, when you were happy, is real. If you think Mr. Tyrone is handsome now, Kathy, 
you should have seen him when I first met him. He had the reputation of being one of the handsomest men in the country. All the girls in the convent who had seen him act or had seen his photographs just used to rave about him. <laughs> he was a real matinee idol then. Women used to wait outside the stage door just to see him come out. So you can imagine how excited I was when my father wrote me that he and James Tyrone had become friends and that I was to meet him when I came home for Easter vacation. I showed the letter to all the girls and oh, were they envious. My father took me to see him act first. It was a play about the French Revolution, and the leading character was a nobleman. I couldn't take my eyes off him. I wept when they threw him into prison. And then I was so mad at myself because my eyes and nose were, would be red. My father had said we would go back to his dressing room after the play, and so we did. Well, I guess my eyes and nose weren't red after all. <laughs> I was really very pretty then, Kathleen, and he was handsomer than my wildest dreams in his makeup and his nobleman's costume that was so becoming to him. He was different from all ordinary men. Someone from another world, and yet he was simple and kind and unassuming, not the least bit stuck up or vain. I fell in love with him right then. So did he, he told me afterwards. I forgot all about becoming a nun. <laughs> or a concert pianist. All I wanted was to be his wife. That was 36 years ago. We have loved each other ever since. And in all that time, there has never been a breath of scandal about him. With any other woman, that is. Never. Not since he met me. Oh, that has made me very happy, Kathleen. It has made me forgive so many other things. He's a fine gentleman. And you're a lucky woman. Can I take a drop to Bridget now? It must be nearly dinner time. I ought to be in the kitchen helping her. If I don't take something to quiet the temper, she'll be after me with a cleaver. Whoa! <laughs> take a drink to Bridget. Thank you, ma'am. You won't be alone, lad. The master and the boys. You sentimental fool. What's so wonderful about a silly romantic schoolgirl and a matinee idol? You were happier before you even knew he existed. When you were back in the convent and you prayed to the Blessed Virgin. Oh, if only I could find the faith I lost and pray again. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord be with you. Blessed art thou among women. <laughs> you think the Blessed Virgin is fooled by a lying dope fiend reciting words? <laughs> you can't hide from her. Oh, I better go upstairs. I haven't taken enough. When you start again. You don't know how much to take. Oh, that must be them. Why are they coming home? They don't want to. And I'd rather be alone. Oh, I'm so glad they've come. I've been so lonely. Are you there, Mary? Yes, James. I'm in the living room. I, I've been waiting for you. I'm so glad you've come. <laughs>